Welcome to the Shack Shack. My name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK, and we're going to have an hour doodling a beautiful flower. I thought we would doodle something nice together. So welcome. Come on in. I hope that you can hear me. Um, did you have a good weekend? Did you have a pleasant Sunday? Wasn't the weather? Well, the, lovely, the weather was lovely here in the southeast of England. Whereabouts are you? Is anybody there apart from me? Our lovely Paul's in the building with you. So my hope is that the sound is good. Um, and then we'll just wait for you to turn up and then we can get started. Sound is all nice and clear. Thank you, Paul Church. Yeah, the Shack Shack. If you're new to the Shack, what it stands for. Morning, Debbie. Good morning. Come on in. Um, shack, safe, happy and creative stay home and craft, which it started, if you're, if you're new to the fold, we started this a couple of years ago during lockdown, uh, when lockdown started, and we, we hung out together every single day, didn't we? And now, you know, life goes on, we get busy again, so we just meet twice a week, on a Monday, today, and on a Thursday. So there you go, come on in, good morning, Ken. How are you, Shaka, fellow Shaka? How are your hands? Are they better since your tumble? Mm. It's so easy. It happens so easily, doesn't it? You rock. Come on in. Come on in. Shut the door. We've got the gas works outside are being repaired on all along the road. So there's road closure for 12 weeks and they're pretty loud out there. So if you hear any shouting and hollering and it's because they're tearing the road up outside the door all the way along. Yeah. And um, so so there you go. Say la vie. On Friday, this chap knocked at the door in the afternoon and I'd been working up here all day and um, he knocks at the door and he said, I've come to turn your gas back on. I said, fair enough. Come on in. So he came in, he turned on the gas cooker got the alga going again. He said, I just need to sort the boiler out as well. I said, okay. I said, actually, to be fair, I didn't even know it was off. <laughs> he said, you what? I said, how long has it been off then? He said, since six o'clock this morning. I said, is it? He said, how could you not have noticed? I said, well, I haven't cooked. I said, now if the kettle were attached to the gas mains, then I'd have been outside. Then I'd have been more alert. <laughs> I don't need I don't need gas to boil the kettle, do I? <laughs> Cheers. Oh. Yeah. Ah, oh, never mind. Anyway, today I thought we'd do something really nice because um, last week, what did we do last week? Ah, sunflowers. Yes, we did sunflowers, and um, and you know. We sent four thousand pounds, four thousand pounds to um, to the Red Cross last week. And that's not all of it; it's still coming in. When you buy the stamps or the groovy plate, we send all profits, all proceeds. Once we take the tax out, the VAT and that, we send everything that we make. There's no profit in it for us. We donate it to the Red Cross. So we need you to buy the things. We need you to buy the stamps. We need you to buy the groovy plates. And then last week, what we did on Monday, because I just couldn't, I couldn't get out. I couldn't get beyond um, Ukraine. And I felt it was just too, um, too glib. Or it, I couldn't just draw magnolias last week. I feel a bit more optimistic for those good people today, not for the devastation, not for the aftermath, but perhaps there is a resolution. Maybe something is, maybe we're moving towards a solution now, you know. I'm ever hopeful. But what we did, right, you bought hundreds of these and hundreds of these, and then all the money that we made went straight to the Red Cross. And... Then I suggested that you make cards with these and you pop a fiver or a tenner or whatever you can afford in the envelope and they're starting to come in now too. So the 4,000 isn't the end of the road 
no, 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 we continue. If you haven't got the sunflowers yet, then would you do me a favor and donate 10 pounds? It's not a giveaway. You get a beautiful set of stamps, you know. We're, we're making the stamps for free. You understand? So, so, yeah, you get something really good for your money. And last week what we did, because I could not just draw magnolias, we were, I'm just showing you what they look like stamped up. Nice, huh? There, look. And then we did them in colour. Mm. That little board is beautiful. Jim drew these. So then we got the card blanks out and we started actually making art, not war. Let's have a look. So then we made a frame, didn't we, with the sunflowers and put the words in the middle. And then we threw some colour at it. Blue and yellow, of course. Isn't that lovely? Mm. Yeah. Little messages of hope. Right, there you go. There's another one. This is a nice one. I, I liked this one. It's like, uh, to me, it's the uh, parent and child, you know, mother and child. I like that one. And then we put some colour on that as well, didn't we? Black line art. I liked that one. And then we did this one as well. So we took the sunflower and stamped it in yellow. Again, yellow and blue. There's a lot of mileage in this little stamp set. You know, so, you know, and you could buy one or two and you could give them to friends, give them to friends as gifts. Beautiful little gift. Groovy plates, great for beginners. Seasoned stampers, seasoned parchers, I mean, sorry. So there you go. Give generously and we will give accordingly. There we are. And today I thought we'd... Um, We'd make more flowers, but this time not sunflowers, daisies. So let's have a look. Ah, uh, the bus driver got ahead of you a little bit. So I just want to show you what we're going to do. Let's have a look. So I've got my tracing pad out. I've got up early. Here we are, daisies. Hmm. So I was looking at what flowers symbolize this morning, sunflowers. Symbolise loyalty, happiness and vitality. Perfect, isn't it? And if you wanted to, you have to know that you could draw sunflowers into this as well. I see a stamp set coming on. So I was thinking at six o'clock this morning, I thought, I know what would be nice. If we, if we, I've seen it uh, in art where you use... It's negative art. I'll show you what I mean, right? We, I'm right into this. You know how when we colour in the background instead of the foreground, it looks so good? Right. So I was thinking we'll stick with some symbolism. We'll stick with shapes. So sunflowers, loyalty, happiness and vitality, daisy. First one, innocence, simplicity and joy. There you go. Innocence, simplicity and joy. And then I thought, right, I'm going to do four. What am I talking about? I, we, we're going to do four. And I thought, mm, yeah, well, circle's good. You may do four circles. You may do a circle, a diamond, a square, a triangle, a heart, right? So we've got, we got the shapes in the background, whichever one. You'll see which works better. See, I just felt because the daisies were so round. That, that one worked quite well. So I used the stamp board shapes to draw around. But, I mean, you can draw around anything round, can't you? Anything round will work. So I thought we'd have a go at that. It's not hard. Well, it looks hard until you break it down. And that's the thing about the shack, isn't it? There are no experts in the building, remember? We're all just hanging out and doodling. It's not a competition. It's not an exam. It's not a test. You can't fail. It's just about doodling. Just let it go and have a go. Let it go and have a go. That's a good strap line, isn't it? Let's do that, shall we? And what, well, I'll show you, I'll show you how to break it down and then you'll see how easy it is. So what do we need? Have you got some tracing paper? The reason I say tracing paper is one, because we can, we can, um, 
we can then transfer it to best. Two, we have a template. We have a template. Otherwise, if we go straight to canvas, then we haven't got, we can't repeat it, can we? You see, whereas if you've got something on tracing paper, then you can actually repeat it. You can do it again and again and again. So we need some tracing paper. I'm sure we've got some in stock. I was looking for it the other week and then I asked to reorder it. Don't know if it's come in yet. You know, supplies, it's very, it, it's, um, it's a funny old world at the moment for a company, you know, for a business, trying to stay ahead of the inordinate price increases. It's just like week on week on week, it's going up and up. As the oil goes up, as petrol prices go up, believe it or not, so does acrylic, so does polymer. It just goes, so does card. Everything seems to hinge on fuel, you know, delivery, oil, it's all, all knitted together. Um, there you go, tracing paper back in stock. Happy Monday. You know, you, you never thought you'd get excited when, <laughs> when you got tracing paper back in stock. <laughs> but it's okay, you know. There's far, far more things going on than getting excited about tracing paper. Uh huh. But. Hey ho, we've got it in stock. Result. So that's why we're going to use tracing paper. And then we need pencils. Pencils. You could just use a bog standard HB pencil. I am a big fan of Faber Castell. You know that. And if you're going to get into sketching and doodling, treat yourself to a little tin of these. <laughs> okay. These are great. And I'll tell you for why. And many of you have heard me say this, but I'm going to say it again. Right. What we've got here is a tin of pencils. You can get, of course, you can get different ones. Every Every brand, every brand worth its metal has a set of graphite pencils. Um, some are softer, some are blacker. I find these are great because they're really true. And when you use an F pencil for fine or an H pencil for hard or a B pencil for black, a.k.a. soft, um, you get exactly what it says on the pencil. I find some brands, and I'm not product knocking here, because, you know, like I say, HB pencil works. Um, but some are very dark or very smeary or when it says when they're soft, they're the black. They're so black that you just you look at it and it smears, you know. So anyway, these are the ones that I recommend. Again, great pencil gift. So what we're going to do is take a piece of tracing paper and we're going to draw this. Right. So this is the way we deconstruct it. All right, I'll show you exactly where we're going. We're going to draw a line that shows us the direction of the, the fern or whatever that is, right? This is a fern or a leaf or a flower or, you know, and then, and then we're going to make a circle and then we're going to make a composition. It's all about the composition. Is that okay? Come on then. So that's all you need is a bit of tracing paper. I've got an HB pencil, bog standard. Hubba. And then, yeah. And I'll tell you what we'll do so that we don't press through our lovely. I'm going to put a piece of card underneath like that. And interestingly, I was thinking that I might use this size card to transfer the work because I thought, hmm, if I put that in the middle like that, well, like that. That gives me quite a lot of scope. If it come, if it came out really, really nicely and we coloured it in really, really beautifully, then I've got the option. I might frame it, you see. So if you put it like that, put it on a card front, I suppose. Mm, but I'm thinking I'm going to stick it right bang in the middle. Um, the paper I'm using, right, well, it sounds like Sally tell you this, but it's not. You know it's not. I just... So we've got the little ones that we use all the time, the little... This is these ones, right? Stencil card three and a half by three and a half. Lovely little toppers. Seven, seven by seven, which is these ones. This is this cut into four. Uh, 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 uh. And then, but we've also got the same stuff because it's such good card for working on. We've got this one, which is a weird size, eight and a half by 11. The reason is because it goes brilliantly on the large gel press, which is an eight by 10. And it just gives you the nice little lip on the side and on the top. OK, and that's why. And this, my friends, this one here is the 8x10 gel, gel press size. 
that one. Because it's a really good card and it, it's robust and it can take, so whatever we decide to do, whether we decide to use water or flick stuff at it or acrylic paint or ink, we can saturate, soak, literally soak it and it won't, it's fine. It can handle it. You know, some cards, often the more expensive, better cards, they can't, they can't handle it. They're too super fine. Mm -hmm. so, so this is really good for texture, paste and all sorts. Right. Okay. Let's get going. So I'm going to stick that under there, underneath the first piece. There you go. Like that. And this is the bit I'm going to use if I don't press too hard. Just like that. Okay. That holds it in place. And then what I'm going to do, so I'll put it there so that you can see where we're headed. And we're just going to, because I don't need to, yeah, I don't need to put that in the middle. Right. And we're just going to make like a fern. So just use your eye, relax. And there you go. Is that dark enough? I'm probably going to press a bit harder so that you can see it better. Yeah. So that's going to be my fern. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take my, my circle. You can use you can use a cup. You can use anything round. What's the diameter, did you say? <laughs> well, just about six and a half centimetres. So, I don't know. I reckon that's about two and a half inches. Don't you? It's not a science. It doesn't have to be exact. It just needs to be reasonable because what it will do is it will give you something to go towards. Right. So then what we'll do is we'll draw around that. So that gives us, we know where the background's going to be now. It gives us an orientation, like a tennis ball, really. Okay. So that's that. Easy. And if we wanted to make a square, put a square in or a heart if you're feeling romantic. But I would say the best thing to do is get the feel for what we're doing. And then, you know, I'd like to work on this for a couple of weeks. We could do one of these every time. You know, maybe maybe um, draw it today, transfer it and finish it on Thursday. And then on Monday, we'll draw another one, finish it on Thursday. See what I mean? We can maybe do a couple. Hmm? Sound good? Daisy. Daisy's easy. Daisies is easy. <laughs> they are. Right. So now let's have a look. We're going to put one in sort of in the middle like there. So the way I do this sort of thing is I, I kind of hover, I air draw. So I'm going to go like that. And then I'm going to lightly go down and I'm going to pop my big daisy about there. See? And then I'll pop another one, I think, about there. Okay. And another one there. And then I'm going to put one up there as well, or outside like that, but it's going to be flatter because it's going to be one look into the sky. See? So you're going to do it more like an oval than a round. Yeah? So now we've done that, we've got the we've got the outside here. We've got the large one there. We've got the smaller one there. And we've got another little one there. Don't worry about the leaves and that. We'll sort that out afterwards. Let's get the flowers in. Right? Bish, bosh, bish. Right. I'll let you catch up. It's easy. Dead easy. Just got to deconstruct it. You could put your flowers where you like, you know. <laughs> you know to put your daisies where I put my daisies. You could have one great big daisy right in the middle if you prefer. Um, you could do smaller daisies. I tell you what, though, just a, um, a forward kind of tip. We're going to color in the background okay and what i found let me show you what i mean if i color in the background on something this is just a little aside if i color in the background on something say i take let's just do this let's do a daisy right so let's do a daisy like propellers there you go but you could do one two do it like that it's better to come around a little bit right there you go do a daisy like that so it's a bit of a ropey one but you get the picture. Right, so there's a daisy. We'll make the head, the centre a bit bigger. Okay. The other thing that I forgot to mention that you really, really need when you're doing this is a rubber. Pencil rubbers, our biggest selling item on the website. Right, that looks better. See, straight away, make the, make the centre bigger. Bosh, looks more like a daisy. 
Now, if let's pretend, don't have to pretend too hard, right? Let's pretend that this is our daisy now, right? I'm just just giving you a, it's like, let's call it a forward tip. So in other words, before we start drawing the daisies up here, let's have a think about what we're doing. All right, so we go in, we make a little teardrop kind of daisy. It doesn't have to be the same, like that. Right, this is what we're going to do. Right, this is a bit ropey, but that's because I want to show you something. There's a point to this. Right, so let's say that's the daisy. Now, what we're going to do, okay, down the road, we're going to... Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, let's use that. No, let's not. Then we're going to use uh, our micron pens, right? So let's just say that this daisy is this size, and then we're going to go... Then we're going to pen them up. We're going to pen them, right? Okay, so let's do this. Right, so these are the, this is penning now. Right, so let's just show you what I'm talking about. And this is the center, nice large center. If you make the daisy, so what's going to happen now is that this is going to get colored in. So what that means is, right, your daisy it gets optically smaller because the line art becomes part of the background. Do you get it? It's if you draw the daisy really tiny, I bet you've you've experienced this before. See, I've drawn the daisy nice and big so that even when I the, the line art kind of gets absorbed into the background, you see. It's still a decent size. Now, here's the thing. I can always reduce the size. If I don't, if I think the petal's too big, then I can always, afterwards, I can make the petal smaller, right? That's easy. Look, see this great big petal here like that? If I think that looks more like a propeller on, a, on, an, on an old biplane, right, rather than a delicate daisy, then, then what I can do, I can, I can bring that in like so. Look, I can bring that right in and then I can colour in around the outside. Do you get what I mean? I can, I can make it smaller, but I can't make it bigger. So if I were to make my daisies, Let's say I make them this tiny. Let's just pretend, right? This is this is me being extreme now, right? If I now colour my daisies in, or not in, I'm not colouring the I'm colouring the outside, right? If I come in like this, okay. See the white area is already tight. Do you, do you see what I mean? So if you do if you do a flower that's that small like that and you think that's going to work then by the time you color in around the outside it's gone it's gone too small so it's it's better to almost exaggerate your flower you see because otherwise in a minute it won't even look like a flower there'll be nothing left do you, do you see what i mean it's it's like you've got to exaggerate it a bit and then you can always reduce it. It's easier to take it back to, to, to make the petals smaller than it is to, where well, you can't make the petals bigger. It doesn't work. Do you, do you get what I mean? So when we're doing, when we're making our daisies, it's just a bit of forward thinking. It's about positive and negative. See, so when I look at this, these are quite big. But what you have to know is the inside of that black line is what the daisy is going to be because the line becomes part of the background. Does that make any sense? Well, it does to me. <laughs> and I'm the bus driver, so hang on. Right, come on, cup of tea. Is anybody here? Let me just take those glasses off. Of course, it's been a busy weekend. Running around, running around. Did you have a nice mother in Sunday? I went over, we went to see my parents and took dinner, we took lunch with us, cooked it over there. That was fun. Um, beautiful day on Saturday. We had a little tea party in the garden 
with uh, Laura and the children and Trevor. That was great. Yeah, so so it's been a busy, busy weekend. And, uh, yeah, but it's, it was a, a weekend not, not working. I did do a, quite a bit of work, but that's prep for TV down the road. It's not really, I can't call that work, can you? <laughs> Making cards. But it is work for me, I suppose. It's, I could think of worse ways of making a living, put it that way. Right, so have you got your daisies? <laughs> You've got to use your imagination, people. <laughs> Let me pan out a little bit now so you can see where we're headed. Oh, wrong way. That's better. See, otherwise it's too big. Right, so now let's put the centres in. And when we put the centres in, what that does is it tells us the direction of the flower. So if you put, see, it's a circle, but if I put this, see what I'm getting at? So take your HB pencil again, Gray. Right. If you want this bang in the middle, then put your, your daisy middle bang in the middle like that. If you want to do one that I did, there you go. So air draw, excuse me, air draw. So this one I want, I want to be facing up that way a little bit. So instead of in the center, I'll just bring the center up to the top a bit. See, they look like bowling balls, don't they? Then this one, I'm going to come a bit to the top as well, like that. So they're looking up. This one's bang in the middle. You could make this one look down a bit, but anyway. Right, so now you've got your centres. Is that okay? And what we'll do is, you, it's difficult to imagine that that becomes that, but it does, it will. Just never the same. They'll never be two the same because you are doing your daisies and I'm doodling my daisies. I think that's part of the joy of drawing, isn't it? That we, everyone's an original, you know? There's no wrong, there's no right, you know? And you might have better ideas. I'm I'm not an expert. I don't, I only woke up at six o'clock this morning and thought, right, I've got, I got 200 people getting on the bus at 10 o'clock. We better get started. <laughs> and that's, and this is what I came up with and I quite like it. Now, let's have a look. You've got your daisies wherever you feel, right? And what we're going to do now is let's start the flowers. I'd say start in the middle. And an air, I can only tell you what I do. Right up and then down. And we're going to go to the, at, at least, at least to the, if you go further, that's okay too, right? If you go out beyond the circle, I'm cool with that. But this is the one at the front. So you might as well get that one sorted first. Let me just put this like that. And then I can swivel it, see? I think it's, it's important to be able to swivel because I know how I draw. All right, let's have a look. So let's just get these. How many, how many petals did you say? I have no idea. This is art. <laughs> it's not a botany lesson. Right, that'll do. I think that's quite good. So it's tight in the middle. It comes up like that. See, and once you've got your, don't worry about it. It's only scrap. It's, 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 it's not scrap. It's, um, it's a rough draft. That's what we'll call it, a rough draft. Right, big daisy head in the middle, like that. Right, that'll do for the minute. You can always change it afterwards. Don't press too hard and it's easy to change. And then we'll do we'll do the next one. I'm trying not to copy the one I've already done because it always throws me if I try and do that. Because so it was particularly nice and then you think, oh, I've got to re replicate it. But it's rubbish to do that. Right, that'll do. That's quite good. So we've stayed, yeah. And then this one, this is going to be definitely pointing up more. So we're going to have long, long like bunny rabbit ears like that, right? And then as they come round, they're folded over, see? You've got to imagine they're, they're around the back on these. So you're just going to go like that, okay? There you go, see? So then it's flopping around the back. And then this one, bring that one in there. There you go, lovely. Make this one come in front. And when you break it down like this, it's not that difficult, is it? There. 
Right, so what am I thinking? Where's my thinking on this one? Right, I think I might bring that one outside of the... What do you think? Bring that one out a bit outside of the circle. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice. So, un, deux, trois. Right, next one. Fourth one. This is more of this, but more extreme. Are we enjoying this? Mm -hmm. Now, let's have a think. Right, this one's splayed, isn't it? So let's do the side ones, like that. That's definitely, there you go. That's a good start. And then and then I think I might leave a gap there because that'll be good when we do the black or the dark in the background. And then that one's behind that one, I think. Yeah, I'm going to stick that. This is coming up the front like that and that one's around the back. There you go. Nice. Now, top bit, let's have a look. Do you want to have a look at the original one? Sometimes it helps, doesn't it? Just to copy something. Right, see, so what this is doing, again, it's coming around like this, and then it's coming around there like that, so it's sitting like that. And then as it comes around here, I'll tell you what might be a good idea, put that one in like that, see? And then these, they just tuck in. There you go. Voila. Yeah, so put the top one in. And then just bring the other two around the outside. And then it looks like it's curving over. Hmm? How are your daisies looking? I like these. Yeah, cool. This will work. There you go. That'll do, eh? Quite like that. Let's have a look. This one looks a bit weird. So the whole purpose of this, the whole purpose of this is, I'm just giving you a chance to catch up. And I'll leave it like that so you can see it. You don't need to be looking at me when I'm talking. You can be looking at this. The whole purpose of this exercise, apart, it's not about, I mean, sure, it's nice to learn how to draw daisies <laughs> from different angles. Of course it is. But... Don't you find that when you when you start doing this, your mind calms down? That's what this is about. It's about slowing down the head and slowing down. Oh, a bit blocky. Just slowing down, distracting you. You know. So take out the, the line. It's about distracting you. It's about taking your mind off what you're worrying about. Because we've been, we've talked a lot about this, you know. So much to worry about. I re there really is. I mean, you know, there really is. They eh? keep piling it on, don't they? You know, it's depressing. It's depressing, but serves no purpose to worry, 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 worry about that, worry about this, worry about, oh, no, hang on, pandemic, no, war, oh, oil, oh, oh, you know, and in the end you're like, and it, it, it just, it's just the pressure. Mm -hmm. You're not alone. It really is. You wake up and you think, oh, now what? What next? You don't want to watch the news, so you don't, because you think any minute now something else is going to happen. So. As, as banal as this seems, getting together on a Monday at 10 o'clock and on a Thursday at 10 o'clock and on a Tuesday with our Paul doing Groovy, as banal as that may seem, given the crises that abound, actually, you've still got to be fighting fit to handle all this, you know, and this is our opportunity to get together, chill realign the thinking it's that reframing you know that's what this is about and just by doing something as simple as drawing a daisy right apart from having some having something lovely at the end uh, you know you you're being creative which is always good for the head right you're taking time for yourself it's like meditation it's like yoga for the mind there you go that's what we're doing it's yoga for the mind and isn't it nice when it goes right? Love it. 
So we've got our daisies. Let's have a look. And now I'm going in and I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking, yeah, I like the shape. Let me show you. How are yours looking? Are you pleased with them? Did you notice earlier what makes a daisy look better? It's quite simple. Look, if you take the center out, it's interesting this. It's almost coming into a sun. If you expand the middle, it instantly looks better. This is interesting, isn't it? I figured that out at about six o'clock this morning. <laughs> there you go. So I love hanging out. Don't ever think, you know, that I wake up and think, oh, no, bloody shit. It's not like that at all. I wake up and think it's exactly, if this is beneficial to you, believe you me, it's beneficial to me. I had no time to fret or panic about anything. I just had to come in here and start figuring out what us 200 mates are doing for an hour. <laughs> you know? oh, oh, good, 203. Well, come on in, right? So if you don't ever think that this is like additional pressure to me. This is not pressure. This is m my therapy too, you know? <laughs> it really is. <sighs> right, so I've done my daisies, and now let's have a look. Got them in place. Let's do the ferns. Now, this is... I figured out a really easy way to do this, right? So you've got your you've got your line there. This is definitely the kind of the direction that we want to go. So there's that, there's that. And don't worry about the stems of the flowers. If there's room, we'll put them in. Okay. Now, what I think is a good idea, have you got a sharpener? <sighs> Sharpen your pencil for this one. Or oh, is that a new one or an old one? Have we got these in stock, Paul? Because they're another thing that are like hen's teeth. <sighs> Faber Castell ones. I've got two. <laughs> Just to be sure, to be sure. <laughs> it's in. It's nothing like most people panic by loo roll. I panic by sharpness. <laughs> right. Sharpens pencil. Now, what we're going to do, let me do it on a bit of scrap first to get my eye in. Right. This is what we're going to do. As we come up, have a look at it. So we're going to do a fern. So let's just do, let's do a fern. Right, we don't want it to be too long, but let's just get, they, they come in, they're like Vs. There you go. Do a couple of Vs. V, V. If they're too tight, then we all soon know. There you go. There's, there's the Vs, right? Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. Right. And then what we'll do is, don't worry about the bottom bit because it's no different to the top bit. So let's just sort the bottom. Let's do the top and then you'll know. Right. So this is what I figured out. If you do, let me just get my eye in. Right. Here we go. Okay. So we're going to go up like that. Look, they're like loopings. Look, I love doing this. I used to do this when I was a kid at school. See? And then the top. Okay, so in big, like if this is the big one, like that, this is what we're doing. We're going to go like that and then like that. And then we're coming back up the stem. We don't actually come up for air. Go like that and then like that and like that and like that and then like that. And you just keep going and making, because they're not really ferns, right? They're like, I don't know, lupins. And if you're not sure where you're going, stop, have a look. Right, we're getting smaller, right, as we get to the top. And then when we get to the top, just do one. Right, that is what we're doing, but in miniature, okay? And don't forget this. So the thing about this one, though, is that it's only a little bit inside the circle. This is free. So this up here won't be dark. So these bits, right, the line will be true. You see? And if that's the if then that's the circle there, then here you've got to know that that's going to be coloured in. Uh -huh. Optical illusion, but it will work quite well. There you are. Okay, you want it? So we're going to come up there. We're going to do the V's first. Look, V's. Where's my best one? There you go. No, it looks quite busy, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to put a B, a V. I'm going to make a V. So if that goes up like that, I'm going to come up there like that. Like, that's quite a big V. Quite a big V, Mark. Okay. 
three, four. And I did actually, when I did this, I rubbed off the top because it looked more like a Christmas tree by the time I was done. <laughs> I can see this is going to be, oh, let me rub. I need to sharpen my rubber, my eraser pencil too. That's it. I've got two, right? One's one's not as sharp as the other one. So what I'm what I'm doing is, right, I'm gonna make a mark. This one is for the rubber. So I put an R on it. There you go. This one is for best, for the pencil. <sighs> Who says you don't need two? <laughs> right. Okay, come on. So we're gonna do this. And I'm going to hold my pencil upright. So, that, right, here we go. Just got to get your eye in. Here we are. And once you get going, it's all right. Don't get caught up in it, though. It's, it's not hard. Right, look. So you're going to go like that. Once you get in, it's like a figure eight. And then tiny. Whoop. Right, and then the daisy cuts in front right here we go let's go again i find it easier to go upwards draw so i'm going to go like that and then here we go right figure eight that'll do and again i'm going to make them a bit bit area a bit too tight and one at the top they look a bit rubbish so one there you go, lighten it up a bit, Barbara. I think the trick is to not get caught too much in the detail. Because look, by the time it's done, it's just a mosh. you just got to get the shape. The shape is the key, okay? Like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if it's looking a bit sticky, well, welcome. That'll do. It ain't over until it's over, okay? And we can always, that's the beauty of using tracing paper. See, the top bit looks as if it needs a little bit more light. Yeah, looks a bit, a bit ropey. See, now I'm going to do the same thing again because I feel I've come out too far. So I'll just knock those edges off, and that'll look better then. Look, there you go. Bit of trimmering. Trimmering, is that a word? <laughs> a bit of vegetation control. Oh, Dave's been out with his trimmer again. Right, so we're just deadhead. <laughs> there you go. There's the top. Right, that's better. Now, when we've done that, right, so we've got our rough idea here. Don't worry about what how rough it looks. See, because then what we're going to do is add a few more. So you're going in and you'll add a few more where there are a couple of gaps. There you go. So then it becomes more random. There we are. See? Look nice when it's done. So you've got your basic down. Nice. Look. Looking better than I thought it would. <laughs> there you go. Right. See? That's it. That'll do. Don't want to overcook it because we've still got some other little bits that we want to put in. But we, while we're in this mood, let's turn this round, do the same on the bottom end. So I'm going to put my, my V's in. Right. V, 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 a bit tight. That'll do. It's quite long, this. Nice though, nice. Right, here we go again. So we're going to go up and over, maybe leave a bit of a gap, make it a bit looser, see if that looks better. Then you can always add them, can't you? Right, and off we go again. And how are we doing for time? Are we all right for time? And yes, the sharpeners are in stock. Well done, Paul. <laughs> See? And you're so focused on making these ferns 
that you're not thinking about anything else. And what I love about this group as well, you know, in the beginning, when we when we started doodling together, cool, do you remember anything other than a little heart on a wire and everyone go, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> but now you seldom hear that. Maybe it's because I'm the only clown in the building doing this. Now, come on, you are doodling along with me, aren't you? Hey, eh? But I think we've all figured out now that you just do it, you know, and you'll find. There, let's have a look. It's going to look so nice. Look, that's it. And then what we'll do is where we made this one a bit looser now, we can add some more. Look, see? It's actually better when it's a bit looser because you can... See, go again. Isn't that cool? See, go in there now. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to do all this side so I don't have to keep turning it around. Yeah, this is nice, you know. Oh, I haven't done this one. Get some more drops coming in this area. See? Look. So when you want them to be a bit bigger or larger, just add a few more. Another generation of pine needles. They're not pine needles, are they? They're like round. But, but by the time we've inked them in, the trick is to get them in the right place, isn't it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't studied this. <laughs> Uh, but I think it looks pretty good. There you go. Let's have a look. Yeah. See, and we've left enough of a gap that they don't all mosh in together. So it's quite nice. Can make that a bit taller. That's quite nice. Good balance. Isn't it? I wonder what it would look like that. No, I don't look right that way because the daisies are looking in the wrong direction. See? But what I'm saying is. If you took it back to the, the beginning, I mean, we're making what we call a portrait, right? It's a tall picture. If you wanted to make a landscape one this way around, you could do, wouldn't that be pretty, right? The, you know, the only difference would be where you put the centers of the, when you do this bit, it's where you put the center of the daisy. You'd put the center of the daisy maybe there or there, and you'd have them looking up. Always probably looks better if they're, See what I mean? Just move the daisy around. But what I'm saying is this whole exercise can also, it will look really lovely in um, in landscape, not just portrait. I always find tall pictures very pretty though, don't you? <clears throat> I always find very elegant. There you go. Right, so now we've done that. Let's have a look. How, how are we getting on? Are we enjoying this one? Quick sip of tea. So we've done that. A bit bigger this time. It's okay though. Don't matter. Look, I've got miles out. Let's have a look. That's the nice thing about. That's the nice thing about um, tracing paper. You can see. See, I've got much bigger, bolder. So that's quite good. And then, for example, we could put a couple of leaves in. So we'll put a leaf. Mm, there's quite a lot going on here, but I'm going to put a couple of leaves here and perhaps a couple of leaves here. Okay, bit of balance, like that. So let me show you the best way to do a leaf. Let's, let's decide the curling, right? So they're going to come in from behind here. Let me just see what I'm doing first. So I'm going to bring a leaf in there, say. Let's put one in. So if that's, the, that's the, va the, the middle of the leaf, okay? And then... Let's bring in the base of the leaf. It's easy, right? So that's the middle, and then that that's the bit down the bottom. And then the top, we, we won't go to the tip. We'll come along there, and we'll just cut in there. So in other words, it's behind. We've tucked it in, see? Like that. Then you can accentuate. If you want to make it a little bit more rounded, then you can take this back a bit. See, don't forget, because this is going to be 
there. See, that's quite good. And then we'll make another one. Let's do another one. This time the leaf is going to be, let's say it's here behind this one, like that. So it's going to be like that. And then this is going to be like that. Then we'll take this out from, there you go. So there's my other leaf, like that. Nice. I want to thin this leaf out a bit at the top. It's a hell of a leaf, this one. Right. That's better. A bit slimmer. You see? And we've got our daisy coming through there. Nice. Let's put another couple of leaves here. We'll put one, look, one looking up and one looking down. So the trick is to use the spine of the leaf, the middle part of the leaf, to decide where you want to. I'm going to put it there. That'll do. Don't get excited. Right, so that's that. And then I'm just going to come down like that. There you are. And then over the back, as far as the back goes, I'll start at the base, but I will come in there. See? So when it comes to shading, it'll be light, shade in there. The shade will be there. And then the shade will be there. And that will show you. Look, if I do it quickly on this one, just to show you. The shade is on the other side of the hill. So if that's the hill there, the shade is in there, see? So the light hits that part of the leaf and then this top part of the leaf as well. And then the shade is here, see? And we could do that. It would look really nice when we do this. But we're not doing it on this layer. We're doing it on the next layer. So we've got that leaf. And then I think we'll put one more leaf. So let's just think about the spine again there. I think so, there, and then like that, and then we'll bring this one in like that. There you go. That'll do. That's it, and then this one comes in over the top. I like that better. There, so there's my two leaves. There's my two leaves up there. That'll do. Cool. And if we wanted to, we could always put a little bit of I don't know, stock. Let's have a look. If we just put some stocks in, one like that. I don't know, maybe I've got too much going on on this one. That'll do. Just two lines like that. I love oh, bear grass. We could do one with bear grass. You, do you know what bear grass is? It's like really thin. We used to make slate vases 20 years ago really beautiful slate vases. I bet a couple of you have got some. We used to do the really beautiful premiere shows and we sold out every time, whether we went to Edinburgh, whether we went to Penshurst or Stoner. We did shows of excellence. We did shows in London. We would take 250 vases and we would leave with no vases. We always sold 250 vases. That was as many as we could make between shows. Handmade, beautiful. I ought to show you a couple of them. Anyway, and they had pin holders in them. And so they were really flat, right? I've made one in ceramic, actually. It's really nice in white. And then, and then what you did was you could put your lilies in and you didn't have to strip all the leaves off and they'd last forever because the water was underneath the slate in a reservoir. Very nice idea. Um, and we, we made these for many, many years. And But the bear grass, we'd take a bunch of the bear grass and we'd put an elastic band around the bottom. So it would just be like a spray of, I don't know, 10 or 15 strands of bear grass and then you would pop it this was the cellar this was the clincher whenever we <laughs> whenever i was doing a demonstration showing people how how to arrange flowers it's funny what you do isn't it to make a living because in those days you see i know i digress but in those days um we stamping was a seasonal thing it, crafting like paper crafting it only happened in the winter months so so in the summer months the business was dead but we still had to pay the rent. So in the summer, we made slate vases. And in the winter, we made stamps. And it worked, you know. And um, anyway, so when we made slate vases, I always had loads of bare grass and, and always wrapped in tiny little elastic bands. And then I'd do the lilies, la 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 and people would be watching me. And then finally, I'd take this little sprig of bare grass and pop it on the... Um, in the, in the centre, on the uh, pin holder. And the grass would just fall it just glorious it just looks so pretty and they were really like pencil thin you know really thin and as soon as i put the bare grass in people would say i need that vase and i need the flowers in it and i'd say well 
I'm here for another three days. So I, if you come back on the last day, I'll give you the flowers, but you can certainly take the bear grass with you. <laughs> and that's all they wanted anyway was the bear grass. Yeah, so, so yeah, bear grass, really nice. What we could do, and it, it literally, it would just be a pencil line that you would just, you could do that. Maybe we'll do that in one of the other pen, in one of the other pictures. When we, when we do the second one, I'll see if we can incorporate some bear grass. But this is literally what it was. It would just be like pencil lines like that. <laughs> it looks really nice. But I think with this, I'm going to do really tiny, like figure eights all the way up. Like this. Because really, that's what stocks look like, don't they? Just like little butterflies all the way up. There you go. Nice. And you can make it tight or you can make it loose. It's up to you. It's quite nice to do. Like little ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Let's have a look. Stop and look at what you're doing. Decide whether you like it, whether you want to make it bigger or smaller. Mm, tinier to the top. Oop. That's it. It gets thinner as it gets to the top, doesn't it? I do know what. And then the little voice in my head says, that'll do, donkey. Right. So now we've done that. Yeah. Now we need to finesse it. So in other words, we need to look at this and say, right, are, we, are we putting stalks in? Do we need stalks? No, just confuse it. So now what I want to do, because I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to take this from this side. I flip it over. I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper, like copy paper, and I'm going to, well, actually, it doesn't look bad that way around. You could get, go double bubble. But I've got to put graphite on this side. Unless I want it in reverse, I've got to take a soft pencil, enter the Faber-Castell. I'm going to take a softer one, like a B. 3B will be good. 3B will be good, right? So I'll take one of these. And I'll trans. I've got to put ink uh, graphite on this side. So then that way, when I flip it over and I go to best, then I take my F for fine, my hard pencil, and then I transfer it. But we could do that if you like. We could. This is what we're going to do. We'll finesse this so it's really nice, so we like it. Right? It doesn't take five minutes to transfer. But say, for example, this one now, right? We're going to take our HB pencil. HB pencil needs to be a bit sharper. <laughs> Graphite. There you go. Look, this one's even got a... Oh, that sounds a bit ropey, Barb. Well, that's why. <sighs> okay. Best one here. Right, and then what we'll do is we'll make sure that we like our daisies, right? And remember, this is going to be dark behind. So get your daisies exactly where you want them. Yeah. It's going to be good, this is. And then when you're happy with your... See, if you haven't got a good amount on this side, I'll show you. Let me just do the daisy. And then if I just show you the one flower... Then what we could do on Thursday at 10 o'clock when we get together. See, so I've got I've got a good amount now of ink on that side. Do I need it on that side? Yeah, I do. Because otherwise I can't see what if it's too sketchy, it's up to you. But I think I need I need to see what I'm doing. Right, now I'm going to take a soft pencil and then I'll I'm going to. I'm going to draw my flower in best now here. Right, so watch what happens. So now I'm going to take my flower and I'm going to just put this daisy down. So what I'm doing here is I'm not I'm not on best yet. I'm just adding graphite or lead um, to the back. Right, but I'm happy with the shape. If I miss a bit, you see, it's only going to transfer. See, 
So that's scrap. I don't want to use it. It's just on a bit of copy paper. Now when I take this and I put it on my best, let me show you what, oh, in the name of art, I'm going to show you, right? So this is going to be where I go to next. Now I've taken, so I've used a soft one. So there's loads of lead on that side, graphite. Now I'm going to take my hard pencil, right, my good, and this one, you see, I can come in now, watch. I'm going to, we would do this, we would normally, what we would do is as well, we would secure this with some low tap masking tape, yeah. So it's best to do it without coming up for air, really, because otherwise you can't remember what you've done and what you haven't done. She said, lifting the pencil. Right, and I reckon, see, when I do that now, when I lift this off, there's a really good, re there, you see now, and that's going to be perfect, good enough for me to go straight in with ink. Okay? And what we're going to do, we can always do the rest with pencil afterwards. All this, all the detail inside the flower and all the, the shading and all that. We can do all that. We don't need to waste time on this side. We can do it on here. We can practice it on here. I can show you what we're going to do. We'll do all that on Thursday, though. Right? So my suggestion is that you, you finesse. This is the front. So you want to make sure right, that you're happy with your picture, that you're, you're, you're going to use your HB pencil and you're just going to make sure that you're happy with what you're going to draw. This is your chance now. This is your composition. Okay. It's going to be lovely. So get it all drawn up nicely. Right. Decide what which bits you want. And then what we'll do is on Thursday when we get together, the first thing we're going to do is flip this over, put soft graphite on the back or HB pencil to do the job, right? Soft graphite. Then we'll flip it back, but we'll go into our best. We'll go to best. And then we'll transfer it. And then once we've done that, then, oh, and don't forget, yeah, don't worry about that. When we've done that, then, um, then, I'll, then we'll finish it. We'll ink it. So we'll do the transfer and the pencil and the ink on Thursday. It's not a race. It's not a race. It doesn't matter what we do as long as we do something. You get out of your head, you get with your hands, and suddenly it's a, it's a miracle. It really does work. You know it does. So that's what we do. And it's great to have a plan. It's great for me too, as the driver, it's great to know where I'm going. And I imagine for you too, it's never been more important than now to, to at least know at 10 o'clock on Thursday, that's what we're going to do. Okay. If you want to get ahead and you want to, you, you need this as, uh, you know, that's fine, but that's what we're doing in the shack on Thursday. Okay. Entirely up to you. Thank you for your help, Paul. Um, if anybody needs anything, don't forget, there's there's a website full of stuff. And these are very important, very important, very beautiful. And all proceeds go to the Red Cross. All proceeds go to the Red Cross. So uh, have a lovely Monday. I'm going to crack on with some work. I don't think there's anything. Tomorrow, Tuesday, 2 o'clock, Paul is going to keep you company. Uh, not 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock, sorry. Uh, for all you... Uh, groovy parchers out there. Um, Paul will be keeping you company at 10 o'clock. And until Thursday, I love you and leave you. And um, I hope that you have a good week. Okay. If your head starts going, just start drawing. It works. It really does. <laughs>